Eric Massa's story. Joining us in Rancho Mirage, California, our friend Ben Stein, the economist, former presidential speechwriter, columnist, Fortune magazine. And in New York, Mark Lamont Hill, professor, Columbia University, and contributor to TheRoot.com. Okay, Ben, your analysis of what you have just witnessed. It, it's heartbreaking. It's all... Mark Hill, what's your read? I mean, I agree with Ben that this is extremely sad. I think it's a little bit funny that he's suddenly becoming a hero and a darling to the right. Suddenly, everyone is very sympathetic to his plight. In reality, this is someone who appears to be dishonest. This is someone who appears to have made several wrong moves and is attempting to use health care as a political football to protect his own legacy. It's a very sad move. But it also speaks to the Democratic Party and, our, and some of the problems we have on the left. We continue to have firing squads in the circle. Instead of aiming our attention at the right in this, in this troublesome policy that, that's, you know, that's moving around, we're shooting at each other. Isn't I don't ben know why Stein, he appears to be I'm dishonest. Sorry. What, 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 what Go ahead, I'm, ben. I'm sorry, Mark. But what was it that makes him appear to be dishonest? What, 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 well, where's the dishonest part? Well, we're, he we're hearing we're hearing conflicting claims now. Some of you may decide to believe Nancy Pelosi. Some may decide to believe him. But at least three different explanations for why he's resigned have come up. And I'm and I, I don't feel confident that he's being completely honest with us. It seems a little curious that he would leave based on health care legislation. It doesn't seem like a thing to do in this well, heat Mark, of political moment. You Mark. Mark, ben, when you ben, find you... somebody in Washington or, or in any time. city who's completely yeah, honest, please call me. Mm -hmm. When you find someone, Mark, in Los Angeles or California or <laughs> New York or Washington, D.C., who's completely honest, please let me know. Hey, Ben. So, so, we, uh, so then ben, we're in agreement. Help, help. Mark, I, I, why do you think he's leaving Congress? Honestly, I think that the, my, my gut says that there's, where there's smoke, there's fire, and that there's something to these allegations. I, what, I, what I can tell you for sure, though, is that I don't believe it's about health care. And like Ben, I hope this isn't due to Rahm Emanuel. I have been a big critic of Rahm Emanuel from the beginning. I think he's a bull in a china shop. I question his politics. I question his motives. But I don't think he would do something like this. And so, again, like Ben, I hope that's not true. And we'll be back and with I more would like Ben to Stein. Ask another question, which is, oh. Well, go ahead, finish, Ben. Now, I was going to say, we've, look, we've had on this show many times a wonderful guy, Barney Frank, who's openly gay, who's had lots of uh, gay stories to tell. Uh, why, why hasn't anyone harassed him? We had a very, very ex excellent Democratic president, Bill Clinton, who had lots of sexual adventures. Nobody forced him to quit. Something's weird, weird is going on here that I don't quite follow. We'll pick right up with Mark Hill and more right after this. Uh, Mark Hill, someone said that Rush, Rush Limbaugh liked uh, Congressman Massa yesterday and doesn't like him today. So do you think he's a darling of the right wing? He will be for another few days. Republicans don't have feelings. They have interests, just like Democrats. And so they're going to use this very opportunistically. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's true, Ben. And they're going to use this very opportunistically. Suddenly, he's going to be a darling. We've seen Joe Wilson, who was a Republican, you know, become a darling, go from being a political third stringer to being on the front page of every newspaper for a few weeks. I mean, this is what happens in this political season. Right now, Republicans are committed to obstructing uh, progress. That's all they care about. They'll do anything to make that happen. Ben, is uh, this uh, this incident damaging? Is this damaging, Ben, to Democrats? I, I think it's damaging to everyone. You know, a, a guest on your show that you've had a number of times, uh, the very very famous author Linda Fairstein, who has a, a fabulous new book out today, Hellgate, says, and she was a sex crimes prosecutor for many many years, decades in Manhattan, right. big big job. She says the great majority of these uh, sex crimes, or not uh, not the majority, but a very large number of these sex crimes allegations sexual misconduct allegations are made up. They're baloney. And, and it's, once somebody gets smeared with that, how do you disprove it? I mean, some guy says, he touched me inappropriately. How do you disprove it? That, that's kind of a sad story that that is going to at least have a part in wrecking the career of this man don't, and who served his country honorably in the Navy and in the Congress. That, that's kind of don't terribly you think, sad. Don't, don't you think, Mark, that some of these men at the party or the person who was groped for want of a better term, will have to come forward. I think at some point, inevitably, they will come forward and we'll hear more of the story. Ben could be right. I mean, this could be something that's untrue. This could be something that is true. But ultimately, all the parties have to come forward. Otherwise, it is a travesty that uh, Congressman Mass's career will be ending without, you know, full justice coming forward. Ben, what's going to happen with the I think, bill? by the way... Uh, well, I think, uh, I, I think it will get pa it will get pa something's going to get passed. They'll ram it through, and uh, if it's not a success, I think the Republicans will wrap it around the Democrats' neck. Not just this uh, November, but for a long time.
Well, it's not so much about, first of all, it's not so much about ramming it through. It's finally having the political courage to stand up to a Republican Party that has been obstructing progress for the last 12 months on health care. But I think the Republicans are going, to, are going to use the success or the failure of, of health care as a baton to beat over the heads of the Democratic Party for the next two years. Ben, do you, well, don't you, you said think we, we need all, health you know, reform, humans. Ben? Uh, we absolutely, I, Larry, uh, I've said since you were a child, Larry, I've been saying that we should have health care for all Americans, but I don't like the idea of screwing up the whole system. I'm an old guy now. I get Medicare. I don't like the idea of taking $500 billion out of us uh, seniors' medical care and g giving it to other people. I'd like to see some system whereby just the poor, just the very poor, are given checks to buy health insurance, let the other people figure it out for themselves. And I also don't want to see money taken out of doctors' pockets. Doctors work very, very hard, get a lot of training. I don't think they should be punished for taking care of old people. Well, you know, Ben, I agree with you that I don't want to, a system screwed up, but the reality is the system's already screwed up, and this healthcare system has always been screwed up. The fact that tens of millions of people are deprived of, health, of access to health care, quality health care, suggests that the system is screwed up. And I don't want to take anything out of doctors' pockets either. They do work very hard, but the working poor work very hard also, and many of them don't have access to health care. So I think we need some kind of a system. I, think we're, let's buy I think we're on the same page with that. But the question is, wh where do we get this from? You're suggesting supporting... Well, let's, uh, uh, you know, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's tax people like you and me and Larry a tiny bit and more and give it just to the very poor. Just you and me and Larry and give it to the very poor and have it done that way. Be honest about it. We're going to take money from well-to-do people I'll and give it to it. poor people. Let's not have all these games. I have no problem taking, you know, a little bit more money from people like you and Larry and giving it to the poor. But I also think that we <laughs> don't want to... <laughs> but I think we don't want to construct a system where we only bolster and add $50 billion in new revenue streams for private health care corporations, which is what the current legislation is going to do. And even what you're proposing, Ben, would also be bolstering these private insurance companies. What we ultimately need is a single-payer universal system. We know that's not going to happen, but we need to at least be moving in that direction. I don't think we're doing that just yet. That but again, like you, I'm for taxing the rich. As Henry Youngman once said, when asked, what do you think of the tax bill, he said, pay it. <laughs> <laughs> ben, thank you as always, Mark. Well, I, I am ben Stein and Mark Lamont Hill.